Hey folks, it's Bill Lavoy here with Shack News, and today I wanted to go over how lock picking works in Starfield. Um, this is something that can be a little bit confusing to players when they first see it, and it does eventually make some sense, uh, and it becomes much easier. Uh, never easy at the highest levels, but much easier. Uh, so we're going to do this live and on the fly, and I'm actually going to pick a lock as I'm explaining the entire system to you, including what skills and perks can assist with this. So. As you can see right now, we are looking at a safe, and uh, we know by the description that it is an expert level safe. Um, now before we go any further, if you want to pick locks, there's a specific skill that you're going to want to use, and that's the security skill found under the tech tree. Now you can pick a novice level lock without having the security skill unlocked at all. Unfortunately, once you get into the game, there's really not a lot of novice level locks. Most of them are going to be advanced, expert, or master. So those are the four levels. Novice, advanced, expert, master. Rank one, rank two, and rank three of the security skill is what will allow you to unlock more difficult locks. So once you unlock rank one of the security skill, you can now try both novice and advanced locks. Once you unlock rank two, you can try expert locks. And once you unlock rank three, you can try master level locks. You'll also notice that there's a description here. And the first one on rank one mentions two auto attempts. So what are those? We're gonna cover that. Rank two, it talks about three auto attempts, but it also talks about rings uh, that turn blue when the pick can be slotted. So we're gonna go over that as well. Um, and then rank three, of course, it adds more of the auto attempts banked and rank four, which I don't even have, uh, gives you some additional benefits such as being able to expend a digipick to eliminate a key that aren't required to solve the puzzle. Okay, so we'll go over what that is, but this rank four is really just kind of uh, icing on the cake. You don't need it to unlock all of the locks at all in Starfield. So we're going to go back here. And here's our uh, our safe. So I don't know what's in here. I just came to this location, um, eliminated a bunch of enemies, found a safe, and thought we'll just try it on this one. So let's try to unlock it. Now, the first thing you have to have to try to pick any lock is a digi pick. Those are going to be found in your inventory under the miscellaneous category. So if you have them, that's where they'll show up. But you have to have one on you at least in order to attempt to pick the lock. And you can see how many you have on the screen. It says Digipicks, 13. When we're looking at the screen, the first thing that we want to note is that there are rings in the uh, locking mechanism itself. There's an outer ring, there's a middle ring, and there's an inner ring. And the amount of rings that you see will be directly related to how difficult the lock is. So on uh, master, which would be one level higher than expert, I will have a fourth ring. So the lock would get more difficult. Now, as you can see on the right hand side under Digipix, we actually have, see here, we can actually click on and select different picks. That's what the, the game refers to these are, um, refers to these as our picks. So we can see the picks. And as you can see, as I click through, some of them are highlighting blue. And all that really means is that that pick can actually fits in one of the slots here. It, it fits in one of the notches on this ring. So as I go through, it's easy for me once I get that lock picking, uh, um, that security skill rank two, it's easy for me to see, oh, okay, this pick actually does fit in this ring. Now, the tough part about that is just because a pick fits in a ring doesn't necessarily mean that it won't fit in one of the subsequent rings. It doesn't even necessarily mean that that pick uh, is going to work for you to solve the overall lock picking mini game if you slot it here. As you can see, this pick fits exactly where I have it on the screen. Um, I could slot that right now. You see at the bottom it says slot key. I could slot that key right now. It would eliminate this pick on the right and it would eliminate these slots on this ring. But just eyeballing this, if I look to the inner rings, 
not the, let's look to the second ring, the middle ring. If I look to the middle ring, look how I'm changing this around. Now, it doesn't fit there, okay, so as you can see, here are the little uh, notches and how they fit in. It doesn't fit here, right? Well, it does right here, right here, and right here. But this part of the key, it doesn't. So if I actually consider this pick and all of the rings, the interior rings and the outer ring that's currently active, I can see that this actual key, this pick, only fits in one spot in the entire puzzle. There's nowhere else that this will go. So it's not a guarantee, but I can be pretty confident that I can slot this in. So I'm gonna slot it in. Here we go, that's eliminated. Now, I still have to eliminate the three other notches on this outer ring. So if I take a peek at it, I feel like, yeah, there we go. If I select that key, that will fit right there. Um, I also wanna take a look and see, will it fit anywhere else? Uh, you know what? It won't, I don't think it will. Okay, so this looks like it's also gonna fit right here. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and slot that in. Now, we're on to the second ring. We've eliminated all the notches on the outer ring. We're on to the second ring. We have remaining picks and we have more notches. Now, we obviously see that this pick, which only has one little latch on it, it will fit in any notch. We don't really wanna use that until we get down to it and we know that we need it. Um, this one will also fit. So as we click through, we start to see what will fit and what won't fit. And if I look at this, I can be, you know, decently confident that this pick right here uh, plus this pick right here would actually eliminate the second ring and put me on my, my final ring. But before I do that, I want to show you something else. At the bottom of the screen, we talked about the auto slot. And the auto slot will allow you to, as you successfully pick locks, you'll bank these auto slots. And if you actually press the auto slot button, it will take a key and it will slot it into its correct spot on the current ring. So if you're stuck, and it can get pretty tough on the master level locks, if you're stuck and you have an auto slot, you could just press it. So I'm gonna actually do that right now. Um, what I wanna do is I'm gonna actually choose a pick over here that we know doesn't fit into this ring at all because it hasn't highlighted blue. And remember, you're only gonna see the blue if you have security rank two, but I do, it's not highlighted blue. So I know that this doesn't fit. Let's just say I'm stumped. I have no idea what pick is going to fit in the notches here. So I'm gonna hit the auto slot, boom. And it grabs the correct pick on the right hand side and it slots it correctly into the active ring, okay? You can see that it actually ate one of my auto slots. I only have one remaining, I had two. So I'm just gonna slot it. I'm gonna trust the game, of course. Uh, I slot it, there we go. Now, there's literally only, this is where it gets a little easier. There's only two picks that would work here. It doesn't matter which one because they're exactly the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and slot this pick. Now we're on to our final ring. And we're doing pretty well. We're gonna be successful, I think, here. But if you got to the final ring as an example, and this is gonna be an easy one because we've already identified the picks that we need. Um, but if you get here and you cannot find any picks that fit into the ring that you're on and it's the final ring, it means you've messed up before. You've made a mistake. There's, you've used a key, not necessarily in the wrong ring, but maybe in the wrong position, which forced you to use a key you shouldn't have used. Uh, it's it's kind of complicated that way, but you can certainly get to the final ring and not have the keys that you need to, to continue. If that happens, you can just press the undo button, okay? The undo button will eat one of your digi picks. So that sucks because you're gonna be undoing and you might have to undo all the way back to the first layer. You could lose three or four digi picks as you're backtracking to the first part of this lock picking mini game. And that's where it can get really frustrating. Uh, if you don't care, I would suggest creating a save file before you start picking a lock. Um, if you're low on digi picks or if you're concerned that it's a really tough lock and uh, you know you don't know that you're going to be successful. That way, if you burn through this and you don't get to the right spot, you can simply exit, you can load your save, and you can start it all over again and you've lost nothing. Um, the lock will be different 
it's always going to be randomly generated. So once you exit out of this and you go back into it, it's going to be different. You're not going to have the exact same lock uh, and the same notches and the same rings that you had before. You'll have the same number of rings because the actual level of uh, the lock picking minigame will remain the same, but it will have different picks on the right and it will have different slots on the uh, on the actual lock mechanism itself. Okay, so that's basically lock picking in a nutshell. There's there's really nothing else to it. You're just looking at the picks that you have available on the right hand side here, and that's what these are. These are all called picks. And you're rotating them around the active ring and trying to find where they fit. That is the very basic level explanation of what lock picking is. Obviously it gets more complicated with tougher locks. Obviously you get some benefits and you get some uh, you know some some perks as you get through the security skill ranks. Um, but that's lock picking in a nutshell. So let's go ahead and pick this lock. That's one. Uh, obviously this isn't going to work, right? And again, like if I just hit the slot, let's see. I don't actually know. Let me do this. Does it eat a digi pick? No. So I'm actually hitting the slot key right now, but because it obviously doesn't line up. It's just not going to let me do it. Um, and it's not even taking a digi pick, so that's good to know. Uh, but let's pick this. Bam, it's open. And this is a good one. This is a really good one. So obviously, uh, you know, the way games work, the harder to, the lock is to pick, generally, the better the loot. So, you know, I've got a little bit of ammo here. I'll take that. A recon stim, I'm going to grab that. A trauma pack, I'm going to grab that. And then, of course... Of course, we have an epic weapon. Um, so even if I don't end up using this epic weapon, I can uh, I can keep it and sell it or give it to one of my companions or my my followers. So there we go, and we're gonna back out. Right and now you will see the container itself is now empty. I got a little bit of XP for picking that lock, and uh, we're on our way. We're on our way to find the next one. Now it is also worth noting that like you will use a digi pick at least one to successfully pick a lock. So it's not as if, uh, you know, it, you don't burn through a digi pick. Uh, if you, um, you do have to have one available and you will use one to pick a lock successfully. Thankfully, they're found all over the world. They're not too hard to find. Uh, generally speaking, you can find them in pretty close proximity to uh, uh, where you find a lock. So especially if it's a story based lock, uh, you'll, you'll almost certainly find a digi pick close by. So that's lock picking, guys. Uh, again, I'm Bill Lavoie for Shack News. I have actually written a full lock picking guide over on shacknews.com. The link to that article is going to be in the description, and this video will be embedded in that article, so you can kind of go back and forth between the two. Uh, but that will kind of explain things a little bit more uh, in, in detail, um, and I'll use screenshots so that you can actually follow along and if you prefer a written guide over a video guide that has you covered uh and if uh you know you're for some reason you were reading the written guide and you saw this video and you clicked on this then maybe you prefer video guides but either way uh we have you covered uh shacknews.com has all of your starfield guide content so head over there uh, you'll see our starfield strategy guide uh you browse through that and you'll find whatever you need so thank you very much for watching the video i hope you all have a successful day in starfield take care